Mina, Code Bonnois, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. We're about to go into one of the most infamous stories in the entire Old Testament. This is the bad side of King David. If he had a really good side, of course he did, and that would be when he killed Goliath. That's the really popular good side where King David's like just this incredibly talented, incredibly fearsome warrior taking out the enemy of the Lord, this giant Goliath. And here, we're walking into David's adultery and murder. The whole story is in 2 Samuel chapter 11. I'm not going to read the whole chapter for y'all if you're not familiar with it. I've encouraged y'all to read the book of 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, or the book of Samuel just in general, because it's so good. It has a lot of intrigue, drama, romance, murder, blah, 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 blah. And it just is going to keep on continuing as I continue to read and continue to go further in. And there's so much just good stuff, stuff we should do, stuff we should not do. Examples for us to follow, examples for us to learn from their mistakes. There's so much. And in this chapter, what happens is King David, he stays home at the time of year when most of the kings went out to war sees one of his um, mighty men's wives bathing on her rooftop. And I'm not sure if she was just like a horrible person for doing this or if bathing on the rooftop was normal in Hebrew culture at that time. I'm not sure, so I'm not going to pass judgment on her for that alone. I will certainly pass judgment on her and King David for when he brought her to his place and he slept with her. I will fault both of them for that sin of adultery on both of their parts. Then she gets pregnant. He calls her husband Uriah the Hittite home. And when he invites him to the palace, he, he basically come, brings him home and says, Okay, I'm going to bring him home. He'll give me a report on the war and how things are going. Then I'll just, you know, I'll send him home. And obviously, a man will sleep with his wife when he is at home with her, especially since he's been out to battle for who knows how long. You know, he hasn't seen his wife for a while. You know, they're, they're going to have sex. That's what's going to happen. But he doesn't go home. He actually stays with the rest of David's servants at David's house. Uh, this part I will read. This is in verse 9. All this is in 2 Samuel chapter 11. This is verse 9. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house. So when they told David, saying, Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, Did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah are dwelling in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go to my house to eat and drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. So much honor coming from Uriah. David then tells him, well, stay one more day, then I'll send you back. Gets the man drunk. He still sleeps um, it, at David's place with the servants. And so then he sends Uriah back with a letter to Job saying, put Uriah in the fiercest part of the battle and then make sure he dies. Since he couldn't cover up Bathsheba's pregnancy by getting Uriah to go home and to sleep with her, he decides to have the husband killed, and then he goes and marries the wife. Verse 26 and 27. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when her mourning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. So this hero has completely fallen into adultery and into murder. And I don't think I need to explain to anyone, believer or not, that um, killing someone or ordering someone's murder, when they're... <laughs> it wasn't peacetime, but he, David took advantage of the battle to kill off one of his own men. He wasn't fighting the enemy. He killed off one of his own men. And so that definitely qualifies as murder. I don't need to explain the difference between peacetime and wartime. For David to kill Goliath, there was nothing wrong with that any more than, you know, our troops, United States troops going out and waging war on terrorism. I have no personal problem with that. I don't have a problem with the idea of troops in general and um, war in general. I don't like war, but I understand its functionality and its necessity. When people are attacking you, you have the right to defend yourself, so on and so forth. 
And David ups and kills one of his most loyal, most honorable men. And so the thing he did displeased the Lord. Murder and adultery displeased the Lord. I feel, I'm like, isn't there some stronger word that could be used there? Just displeased? But the Lord's displeasure is going to lead into something quite horrendous and quite devastating for David. And we're going to get on that in the, um, tomorrow's message and in the upcoming days. Look forward to that. I say that with a bit of reluctancy in my heart because I'm just like, this story is just so soul-crushing. Like, David was such a great guy, and he fell so, so far. And it's just, it, it's crushing to see something like that. There will be redeeming points. There will be good things to follow. And, of course, the Bible is primarily here to lead us into truth. And a lot of the things down here are negative. They're dark. They're scary. They're bad. But they're true. They're real. They happen. And the Bible doesn't shy away from those stories. And I love that about the Bible. I love the way it shines a very bright, just stark contrast on how a man can be so good and how a man can be so bad. And that light just shines on the whole thing. The Bible doesn't divide. God doesn't, you know, excuse one action or overly promote another. He just, he's like, here's what happened. Here's the whole story. The good and the bad and the ugly. So stay tuned. I'm, I am, I'm looking forward to seeing the resolution of all these horrible things. I don't like some of the things that happened. I don't like the fact that David had to be punished for what he did, even though it was necessary, but I love the way that the Lord simply shows us His truth and His goodness and His love in the middle of horrible situations such as this. So thank you guys very much for watching. I love you, and God bless.